Hello and welcome to another training from Ultra Digital. I'm Paulo, and on this video, like I said on the previous one, I'm going to show you how we can set up a shadow ca catcher using Cinema 4D and V-Ray. So here we have the same exact sim we had uh, previously, but now of course we need to add um, light tags to and, and camera tags and the uh, V-Ray compositing tag to the relevant objects. So here we've got a camera tag, a physical camera tag applied to the camera. Here we've got for these lights, since it's an area light, we've got here on the light type, area light selected, intensity set to 5, and we also have got, of course, enable shadows. Here on the compositing tag, I'm I okay. Let's probably so this on these com properties we've got everything at its default values. Um, here on the surface properties, I'm going to show you why I've got it set up to zero here on the receive GI. And for the matte properties, we need to check on matte surface like that shadows, so we can. Uh, uh, capture the shadows uh, from the um, light sources. Here under in the settings, let's have a look into it. I'm not going through all the render settings here. Um, on the, um, let's see, indirect illumination, we are using brute force and light cache. Not going through the details there, doesn't, doesn't matter really. On the color mapping, this is set up to a true linear workflow. I'm going to make a video later on regarding just a linear workflow for multipass compositing. So I'm not going through these settings. And here on the environment, this is where we need to also set up thi some things. Right now, I'm going to uncheck this and let's um, see in in a moment why I've got it set on like like this. So usually, you just need to add your background image to here this texture slot and set the map type to frontal. So let's make here um, a test. So right now, this is the image we are using as the background like that. We are having the shadow, as you can see, so everything is working fine, we are capturing the shadow, but, uh, but as you can see the background is like it's um, overlaid on top of the image. This is um, something that, you know, we can get around this by going to the render settings and override the GI environment and set it to black, like that. So if we re-render this, now we solved the problem, like that. So now let me show you why here on the compositing tag I've set up the receive GI all the way down to zero. So let's let set it back to one. Let's render it again. And now as you can see we are starting to receive some of the GI information here on the floor that it's supposed to look like this completely transparent. Now on the on the shadow area it's more physically accurate because we are getting some of the GI over there. This is one of the reasons why this is just like a solution on the fly just for quick testing. Things like these should always be done in the compositing stage and not on the fly like these because we've got these type of limitations. So since the, the, you know the um, the purpose of these is just to get a shadow, I'm going to put the receive GI back all the way down to zero. So on on this particular scene, we are only getting. Uh, the GI from the lights, from this light we have here. Oops. So let's uh, think um, what uh, about. Let, let's talk about another problem. If we make this material, the sphere material, reflective. So let's make another test here. So 
so okay we can't really see that the good thing is that we are getting the reflections from the shadow which is good so let let's just increase here the um, specularity here so let's increase the Fresnel probably all the way to 4 something like that so we can see a little bit better the um, the effect that I want to show you guys so now we are getting the same problem again as you can see we are getting the background image overlaid on top of our object and of course now we are also seeing the object here so this is something that um, that's the reason why we should do this only in the post stage so to solve this again we need to go here and override the reflection environment with let's try black right now let's first so we can see the result so now we are not getting these stripes overlaid on top of our scene but of course now the environment is a is completely black a way to get around this is to go to a gray color in this particular case so let's go to 50% gray let's re-render this now it looks a, li a little bit more natural and we are not getting the stripes overlaid on top of our scene but as you can see we are getting the floor on the reflections like that so the only problem we, we could get rid of the floor on the reflections but the downside is that we are not going to be able to get the the shadows reflected too so let me show you these let's uh, uncheck showing reflections let's re-render and now we are not seeing the, fl the floor there and we are not getting also the reflection from the shadows so this is uh, probably a good setup for non or non reflective objects or two reflective objects but as soon as we start to get reflective objects the downside is that we start to get these you know um, we are not getting the um, the shadow reflected here um, one thing that probably uh, I should talk about is of course this is a very simple scene with just a couple of uh, you know just as a very simple background but if we, we would be talking about um, an HDRI from a real environment with a backplate for example we would probably choose a color or a type of texture that would resemble a little bit more with the type of floor we, we would be getting on the backplate so if this would be something like um, a sky with a, a grass on the floor we would probably choose here on the floor material we would use uh, grass texture so we could get the the grass being reflected properly here on the floor but as I said ideally we should always do this on the compositing stage because we get a lot more control over the shadows, the type of reflections and all that sort of stuff. So guys I hope you enjoyed this really quick tutorial and this casted some light into the subject. If you have any any questions please shoot me an email and I'll be glad to answer. Okay guys see you on the next one. Bye bye.